What's up, nerds? It's MTG Man, and welcome back to Kitchen Table Showdown. That's right, episode 5. We're like, what, 50 decks into this? Whatever. We're a shit ton in, and, uh, you know, I still have a few more to go. I still have some interesting concepts to pitch, whatever. Um, but we're gonna start off with Runo. So this is a Leviathan, Kraken, Serpent, Octopus deck. Um, the main premises is, yeah, we play these big stompy creatures, you know, Scourge of the Fleets also has, acts as removal, but we're going to be playing these big stompy creatures, um, we're going to be doubling them up with, um, uh, Krothus, Lord of the Deep, basically you transform Runo by getting, uh, you know, big creatures in your graveyard, and then when he enters, you can put one on top of your library, at the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top of your library, since it'll be a big creature and its mana value is six or greater, you'll get to transform him, and then you basically just win the game from there. We also have Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep. Um, it's gonna let us, she's gonna let us get more spells off. So if we play one Sea Serpent, we might be able to go into a second Sea Serpent, uh, you know, Crack and Leviathan, whatever. We're using Chromatic Stars and Wizards Rockets for color fixing, as well as just to make the deck run smoothly. High Tide to give us more mana, Spell Pierce to protect our spells, Thought Scour to help us get, like, Serpents and whatever in our graveyard, um, Whelming Wave to wipe the board except for us, along with Feeded Pools and Tangled Islet and 15 Islands. You'll notice there's no Swamps, there's no Forests. Swamps and Forests are very second thought in this deck, um, and we're just going to be getting the mana through Chromatic Star, Wizards Rockets, um, and I'd rather have a mic like a, a dual land, not dual land, but a land that's also an island so that we can get more mana off of high tide. Um, anywho, playing a test hand here. So we're going to keep this. We're going to go island turn one. We now have wizard rockets entered tapped. Um, so when we need to cast something with colored mana, we'll be fine. I think here we're going to thought scour mill two. Draw a card, uh, Thought Scour, Mill 2, draw a card, um, go to turn 3, I think we will, <sighs> okay, so there's two options here, we either Thought Scour, or we run out Runo, Runo doesn't really have anything to do in the graveyard, so I think it's best to run out another Thought Scour, Mill 2, draw a card, um, at this point, we actually can do things with Runo, but I think what's better um, is we have six instants and sorceries in our graveyard. Uh, so Talarian Terror is only going to cost one. So we'll run out Talarian Terror. Uh, we'll run out another Wizards Rockets, enters tapped. Go to turn four. Um, I think we're going to tap Wizards Rockets for a green. Um, we get to draw a card off of Wizards Rockets and then run out uh, Runo. He's going to put uh, Talarian Terror to the top of our library. Um, at the beginning of our next upkeep, we reveal Talarian Terror, um, which means we get to flip Runo. Um, and then we draw Talarian Terror for turn. Um, sorry. Wait, sorry. Fuck, so this should be on top. Sorry. It's just a little confusing. Uh, we'll run out Talarian Terror since we have things in our graveyard. And then from here, um, is this a, okay, it's just a transform, so it's not like an exile in return, so we don't have to worry about it needing haste. Um, here we're going to swing in for six, nine, and then create a copy of another target attacking creature. Since it's a Leviathan, uh, or since it's a serpent, we'll get to create two copies. So we're going to swing in for six, and then six and then 6, so 18, and then 3, so we swing in for 21 turn 5. Um, pretty simple, kind of consistent, which is strange for having such big creatures, but we didn't even have to use high tide to run things out. Um, overall, pretty stompy, pretty cool. Next up is Varmint. So Varmint is a mono green self-mill Rise of the Varmint deck, um, where you just want to get things in your graveyard as fast as possible. Um, of course, we're talking creatures in the graveyard. Uh, so we're running Aftermath Analysis. We can only really afford one, uh, but it's going to mill, and it can also help us get our lands back. Boneyard Worm is going to get big, depending on how much is in our graveyard. Circle of the Land Druid to mill. Uh, Death Bonnet Sprout to mill. Uh, Ghoul Tree is going to be basically a 
uh, one mana 10 10 if we play our cards right. Uh, Golgari Grave Troll is a good way to mill. Um, if it gets in the graveyard, we can then mill six to put it back to our hand, so pretty solid. Kessa Cage Breaker is going to be a basic win con. Um, this deck is very stompy, so if we have like seven or eight creatures, that could be seven or eight wolves coming at the opponent, and that can just lead to a win real fast. Um, Rubble Belt Maverick. Surveilling 2 is going to be able to put 2 cards to Graveyard, and he's also just going to be value when he's in the Graveyard. Splinter Fright can get really big for only being 3 mana, and it's going to help us mill. Elephant Resurgence is, it could be like a 2 mana, 7, 7, 8, 8, whatever, um, as long as we're able to take uh, more advantage of it than our opponents can. Nature's Resurgence is possibly a 4 mana draw, 5, 6, 7, whatever. Uh, Rise of the Varmints, flood the board with tokens, depending on what's in the graveyard. Crop Sigil to get more things in the graveyard. And then Forests. Pretty simple game plan. Um, I think we want to keep this hand. It's not perfect, but we'll Rubble Belt Maverick. Surveil 2. I think we're going to put the Resurgence in our in the graveyard. Um, crop Sigils to hand, or uh, to top. Then we're going to play Crop Sigils. Uh, so at the beginning of our next upkeep, we put the next we put a card to the graveyard. Um, I think we want to play another Rubble Belt Maverick. Um, yeah, so we're gonna look at the top two. Uh, I think it would be best to just put both forests back on top. Um, we'll move to turn four. We mill a card, then we draw for turn. Play a forest. Um, run out a Boneyard Worm. It's only a 1-1 one, one at the moment. Um, go to turn 5. Mill a card. Um, run out Splinter Fright. Still only a 1-1. One, one. Um, at the beginning of... Sorry. Fuck. Um, we should have... Whoop. What the fuck? What card do we even draw? Um, boop, boop, boop. Because we're milling with Splinter Fright and we're milling with Crop Sigil. Um, and you just want to keep building up your graveyard until eventually you win. Very simple, very... It's, it's a green graveyard deck, what are you expecting? Next up is Dross Trade. Um, this is a give your opponent Archfiend to the Dross um, when it has no counters on it so that they lose the game type of deck. Um, you can give it to your opponent with Blim um, or Harmless Offering or uh, Fateful Handoff or Wrong Turn. Um, basically, you want to give it to your opponent, make them suffer, and theoretically just lose the game because it'll have no counters. Um, alternately, you can use Rust Elemental. Um, if they don't have artifacts, they're just going to keep taking four and they won't even be able to swing in with it. Um, or you can give them Demonic Lore, um, which you'll get to draw the three cards, but they'll just keep losing life, um, which is basically a it's a win-win, honestly. Um, we also have Serum Visions to draw, Spell Pierce to counter their spells, Cathartic Pyre as removal and draw, and then Mind Stone is going to be basically how you ramp, alright, because a lot of these spells aren't really doing too much besides taking up mana, um, and then we're playing Evolving Wilds and Basic Lands. <sighs> I think we don't keep here. I know we don't keep here. I think we want to keep here. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to Evolving Wilds for a Swamp. So we're just going to call you Evolving Wilds a Swamp. Um, no, fuck it. We're actually, we're going we're gonna to crack it. We're going to search for a Swamp. We're not lazy. We're going to move that to Battlefield. We're going to shuffle. Uh, swamp Hunter's tapped. Go to turn two. Um, draw for turn two, since, yeah, whatever. Play a mountain, go to, don't play a mountain, fuck that. Play an evolving wilds, search for an island. I just shuffled, I didn't search. Um, move the island to the battlefield. Uh, now we shuffle, so we don't see shit. Island enters tapped, go to turn three. Um, mountain, I think, even if it's not the best option, we demonic lore to draw three. Uh, sure, we'll be losing six life, but... Now we have a wrong turn, so we can give it to the opponent next turn. Um, play an island. Go island swamp, mind stone, mind stone, mountain, island, wrong turn. Give the opponent demonic lore, so now they're going to keep losing life. We would have lost 12 life. Jesus Christ, that hurts. Um, 
so we're at eight. Uh, they have that. We're gonna go to turn five. Um, I guess play out a a rust elemental. Um, go to turn six. Uh, they've lost life from demonic lore. I guess here we would fateful hand off the rust elemental. So that they'll just start losing life with that too. And then hopefully Rust Elemental and Demonic Lore knocks them out before, uh, you know, we lose because we were at 8 life. Definitely a very 50-50 kind of deck. Um, if you don't have the way to give things away, you're completely fucked. But I think it's kind of fun in concept, so I wanted to put it out there. Next up is Dinosaurs. So Dinosaurs, um, this is probably the only deck that has any sort of sideboard. And it's because Kahira the Orphan Guard um, is... Nah. Okay, I don't, don't say shit. I had to change the entire deck list because I forgot that I couldn't have any humans. And there's like that pretty okay-ish dinosaur uh, support that's a human that'll make your dinosaurs cost less. So I had to like scramble to uh, change that shit. But no, we're fine. We're all good. Uh, so Dinosaurs is a stompy green-white deck. Um, so we use cheap-ish dinosaurs that, um, are going to either, uh, help us bring out other dinosaurs and make them powerful or things like that. So, like, Drowsling Tyranodon is only good if you have a power for a greater dinosaur on the battlefield, and Pugnacious Hammer Skull is only good, um, uh, what's it called? If you also have another dinosaur on the battlefield, uh, and Stubhorn Sentry only gets strong when you have, uh, 10 permanents. So, basically, we use these small dinosaurs to also help power out things like Galta. Um, we have Imposing Vanasaur in order to be able to cycle, and it's just pretty free. Um, Shifting Ceratops is a pretty solid beater. Um, Thrashing Barnadon is removal, and it's a dinosaur. Or Shaker Dreadmaw to Dread Draw, I guess. Um, that was terrible, I'm sorry. Um... We, of course, are playing Wizards Rockets for draw, Path to Exile for removal, Commune with Dinosaurs to get more dinosaurs to hand, Life's Legacy in order to draw, Savage Stomp as kind of removal, Angelic Gift, because a lot of dinosaurs have Trample already, but Thrample, which is Trample and Flying, or... What the, what the fuck is Thrample? What am I talking about? I don't know, the Flying Trample combo is pretty hard to, like, get around, so... Uh, then we're playing Forest Plains and, of course, Kahira the Orphan Guard, um, is the only sideboard any of these decks have. I just thought it'd be cool to build a deck with a companion. Um, so let's test it out. I think here, right? And I might be crazy, but I think we go Sentry. Forest. Drowsing Tyranodon. Plains. Um, Pugnacious Hammer School. Squ swing for three. Planes, Cycle Imposing Vanasaur, um, Angelic Gift to give it flying, um, draw a card off of Angelic Gift, um, Cycle Imposing Vanasaur, draw a card, swing for six in the air and three on the ground, um, here we either, I think, I think we play Thrashing Bronodon. So, we have the City's Blessing now, because we have 10 permanents. So, we're going to swing for 3, 6, 12, and 6 of it's in the air. So, theoretically, that wins us the game. Overall, Dinosaurs is strangely consistent, given it's a dinosaur deck. Um, but yeah, next up, speaking of dinosaurs, this is a Thrasta Tempest Roar deck. So, it's Mono Green Storm, um, which sounds pretty strange in concept, but it actually kind of works. So... We use generally cheap cards like Chromatic Star, Charge Through, um, Irresistible Prey, and Abundant Growth that are going to draw us a card when they enter, so we can help cycle through our deck. Um, we use plot cards like Tumbleweed Rising, um, and uh, Beast Bond Outcaster, and then we use other Storm cards like Weather the Storm, Chatter Storm, and Ave Progenitor Ooze. To basically just benefit off of casting as many spells as possible. Uh, Llanowar Elves just to help speed things up. Uh, Thrasta Tempest Roar is the main threat. Um, it's going to cost 3 less for each spell we cast this turn. So if we cast 3 spells, 
it'll be a three mana seven seven, um, which is pretty good. So overall, strange deck. It's very low mana. Um, I think we would not keep. I think we will keep. We're gonna put one Thrast to the bottom. We're gonna Elvish uh, Lanowar Elves. We are going to Chromatic Star, uh, Charge. Hmm. Hmm. I think we just want to draw a card here. So we're going to draw a card. Um, we're going to tap for Abundant Growth to draw a card. Um, I think here we play a forest. We are going to uh, plot Tumbleweed Rising. Um, and this may or may not be the turn we go off. So let's just see. We're going to uh, Abundant Growth, draw a card. Um... Charge through, draw a card. Um, okay, so here's the ways we can play it. I think... Um, chromatic Star for green. Draw a card. Hmm... So what, that's one, two, I hate, I, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to run out Thrasta, but I think we can still, uh, Tumbleweed Rising, that's a third spell, um, use the green floating and Lanowar for Chatterstorm, copying it four times, and then we also create a 1-1 one, one from Tumbleweed Rising, uh, so we've got five 1-1s one, on the board, theoretically we could beat over with that, or if we wanted to, we could... Tumbleweed Rising, Tumbleweed Rising, uh, play a Forest for turn, um, and then try and go again with Abundant Growth, draw a card, um, f charge through, draw a card, uh, Forest for turn, one Tumbleweed Rising, so Thrasta's at um, three mana, we pay the three mana for Thrasta, Tumbleweed Rising, um, create a 7-7 seven, seven off of Tumbleweed Rising, and then we just swing in. That's basically what the deck does, that's how it works. Um, very simple. Green usually I don't see as storm colors, especially not motto green, um, but it works pretty well. Next up is Shuffle Scuffle. Um, this deck's strange. It's made around trying to make your opponent shuffle their deck, uh, whether that's by searching or by other effects. And then you punish them when they shuffle, basically. So, cards like Kosi's Trickster, um, Psychogenic Probe, and Psychic Surgery are going to make the opponent suffer for shuffling their deck. Psychic Surgery is going to get rid of a probably decent card. Uh, Psychogenic Probe is going to burn them, and Kosi's Trickster is going to get big. Uh, we also have River Song because it'll either punish the opponent for scrying or surveilling, or we use cards like uh, Sundering Ex Eruption, Cleansing Wildfire, and um, Ghost Quarter to make them search their deck. So they're also going to shuffle when they do that. Um, so she'll deal damage when they shuffle. Um, <laughs> Soldier of Fortune is another way to make them shuffle. Weeping Angel will shuffle creatures back into their deck, so another way to make them shuffle. Wizards Rockets for consistency. Sur Surgical Extraction uh, searches their library and is going to make them shuffle. Uh, Cathartic Reunion for draw. Uh, Blink is another way. It'll make them shuffle twice, so just more whatever. Um, and then Islands, Swamps, uh, Mountains. Pretty simple deck, but it does what it wants to do, so... We're going to keep this hand. We're going to go for Wizard's Rockets, turn one. Uh, enters tapped. We're going to Ghost Quarter. I think here it's best to Cathartic Reunion. Put the Mountain and I th the other group. Yeah, to draw three. Um, go to turn three. We are going to run out Trickster. We are going to run out Psychogenic Probe. Go to turn four. Um, we are going to play River Song. So at this point, we can crack the Ghost Quarters, um, and that's going to make them search their library. Well, well, they don't have to search for. Okay, they don't have to. 
technically they don't have to search for a land, all right? But if they do search for a land, uh, they will take two damage. We'll put a plus one, plus one counter on Cozy's Trickster. Um, and then River Song will deal two damage to them. So it's basically just sticking them in this loop where um, they either get their lands destroyed and they are set behind or they search their library and they shuffle. Um, we could, on this turn, probably... Okay, we're going to crack Wizard's Rockets for zero. Draw a card. Um, I think we just want to play Soldier um, so that we can make them shuffle on their next turn. We can Surgical Extraction something in their deck or something from their graveyard, um, which will put a plus one, plus one counter, deal two damage, deal two damage. Um, we can pay one in a red to make them shuffle, gain a plus one, plus one counter, deal two damage, deal two damage. Um, and then just keep going. Surgical Extraction, deal two damage, deal two damage, or deal two damage, deal two damage, plus one, plus one counter, make them shuffle, two, two, counter, um, and you just want to either burn them out or just make them suffer. Um, overall, very strange deck. Um, there's not too many consistent ways to make your opponent su shuffle their library. Um, but, like, they either get setback lands or they pay. Um, and they really don't like either. So, definitely an interesting sort of deck. I haven't really seen built. Um, so, it's pretty perfect for Kitchen Table Showdown. Next up is uh, Little Guys. Um, this deck is strange. It's $20 exactly. So what we do is we use Kudo, King Among Bears. Um, other creatures you control have base power and toughness 2-2 and are bears. Um, and then we use cards like uh, Kutzil and um, uh, Baird, where if you control a creature with power uh, greater than its base power, you get a certain ability. Um like drawing cards when they deal damage or creating more soldiers and then those soldiers will also become two two bears um so it'll just continue uh you just want to gain little bits of value with your little guys um hope of gear per becoming a two two is just like a little bit better listener elf being a two two just makes it a little bit better uh and then voldaren epicure is a draw and a two two for one red isn't bad we also use cards like Mirror Box to uh, cancel out the uh, one of Legend Rule, um, Wizard Rockets for draw, Path to Exile for removal. You'll notice a lot of these decks use similar cards, and it's just because these are the cheapest, best ways. Like, I could put Swords to Plowshares in, but I think that's like 90 cents a card. So Path to Exile is just more efficient. And what would I rather play? A, you know, a Black Destruction spell or Path to Exile? Uh, same with, like, Drawing and Cathartic Reunion. We also have Reckless Handling to get Mirror Box into your hand. Um, and then Evolving Wilds, Forests, Mountains, and Plains. It's a simple deck concept, but can actually be pretty explosive. So, we'll start with a Voldaren Epicure, dealing one damage, creating a Blood Token. Go to turn two. Um, Wizard's Rockets, crack the Blood Token to discard a Reckless Handling, draw a card. Um, crack. Um... I think at this point, we want to, yeah, we want a Cathartic Reunion. We're going to discard Reckless Handling and Hope of Gear per draw three. We'll play a Planes for turn. Wizard's Rockets enters tapped. I guess we'll sack this Wizard's Rockets for zero just because. Go to turn four. Um, Kutzil. Uh, fours for turn. Uh, planes for turn. I think we want to crack Wizards Rockets for zero just to draw that card. I think we play a mirror box here. Um, without Kudo, we are a little bit behind, but I mean, run out Kutzil, run out Kutzil. We have a good board of a, like attackers right here. Um, they're all getting what? Plus two, plus two because there's yeah so we'd go that we can now play kudo sure the three threes become a two two um but they still have the same name and all that we'll play another mirror box so now they're each six sixes and because their power is um greater than their base power because of mirror box um 
we will be able to swing in, and when they deal uh, combat damage, we'll draw a card for each of them. So this is a draw 3 slash 18 damage to 3. Um, we can path to exile something, and on our next turn, we can run out Bairds. Overall, pretty simple concept. Definitely, you want to keep Kudo hands. Um, I just... I hate mulliganing over and over because it makes the deck look more inconsistent than it is. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It's what the concept is. Next up is Rowan. So, so yeah, I mean, as presumed, it's a Rowan Scion of War deck. Um, so your black and red spells cost X less, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. Um, so we use cards like Blood Celebrant and um, Wall of Blood to get our life lower. I mean, you could pay, like, 19 life and then have X spells be 19, um, and then hopefully swing in with Rowan to win. We also have Street Wraith as a good cycler, and because it'll help us lose life. Um, Wizard Rockets for draw, Cathartic Reunion for draw, Covenant of Blood, partially because, yeah, it'll be nice to have it reduced, but also because we need more life, all right? Because we, if the opponent's at 20 life, and we're at 20 life, we can't lose 20 life because then we lose the game, right? So we can't make our X spells 20. We have to make them 19. However, if we have a Covenant of Blood, that just evens it out a little bit more. Uh, Crater's Claws. So these are the X spells we're talking about, right? We want to be able to just hit an opponent, all right? Um, and if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, it's X plus 2. So 4 or greater. Um, we'll just be able to hit in for say x is 19 we'll be able to hit him for 21 damage and win the game um we use cut as removal and ribbons as another x spell faithless looting for draw uh rakdos return this is kind of like the halfway point so you have crater's claws to win the game right you have cut and ribbons for versatility and then you have rakdos's return where if you're not too sure and you don't want to go out all out you could pay like seven life and your opponent has zero cards in hand so they basically lost the game still um it's just a different option uh and then mountains and swamps overall pretty simple in concept just get out rowan win the game this is literally the perfect hand um so we're gonna go wizards rockets tapped we are going to um street wraith cycle we lost two life there. Um, I guess we can cut something. Go to turn three. Um, even better, honestly. So, at this point, I think we play Rowan. Um, we go for zero to draw. We go to turn four. Uh, we play a mountain. I think we would just... Run out Wall of Blood. Um, pay... <sighs> Shit, no, we don't want to pay. We'll, we'll run out Wall of Blood. We go to turn five. We play a Swamp. Um, we're going to pay 19 life to Wall of Blood. Tap Rowan, so everything is going to cost 19 less. Uh, for... Ah, ah, I hate this. Um, so I guess we are kind of forced to use Ribbons. Um, we will Ribbons for... And then we'll pay three extra, I guess. I didn't even think about that. You can just pay the rest. So that's 22 damage when we aftermath ribbons. So each opponent will lose 22 life, and then we've basically won the game. Um, definitely a very fast combo-y sort of deck. I'm not sure how it's going to match up against the rest of the pod, but uh, only time will tell. Next up is Ascendancy. So this is a white, blue, black um, spirit deck. So, it's named Ascendancy off of Obscure Ascendancy, right? So, when you cast a spell, if its mana value is 1 plus the number of soul counters on it, you put a soul counter on it and create a 2-2 spirit, right? And then if there are 5 or more soul counters on it, spirits you control get plus 3 plus 3. Which is a huge buff, especially since most spirits have flying, right? So, you'll notice, um, distribution-wise, we basically stop at 4 mana, right? And I hear what you're saying, but we want to get that plus 3 plus 3. Well, we're going to be using Proliferate because that's just a lot easier than casting a 5-drop. Um, but overall, so Drog Skull Captain is going to bump all our spirits. Grateful Apparition is a spirit and it's going to let us proliferate. Indebted Spirit's just a good 1-drop. 
Uh, Sephiroth, Seraph of the Scales is a decent 4-drop, and it'll create spirits. Supreme Phantom to bump up all our spirits, and it's a good 2-drop. Staff of Completion is a good 3-drop, and we can proliferate with it. Uh, augment Experimental Augury proliferates and can help us get cards. Spell Pierce to counter spells. Drown in Icarus removal and proliferation. Uh, Duress to pick through our opponent's hand. Serum Vision in order to help us draw. Shadow Summoning to get... I mean, they come in tapped, but paying 2 mana to get 2 one ones and their spirits so they'll get bumped by all your shit is actually pretty solid. Um, and then Tezzeret's Gambit uh, as a draw spell and proliferation. We're playing Evolving Wilds, Islands, Plains, and Swamps. So, how this deck works, we want to keep a hand with Ascendancy. So, we are going to Evolving Wilds, uh, search for a Plains, move that to the battlefield. Uh, we're going to Shuffle. So, this enter is tapped. We go two. Um, so, turn two. I think we want to play Supreme Fanta. Mm, no. No, no, no. We actually want to play a Swamp. Play Shadow Summoning, create two 1-1s. One Next turn, we are going to play Obscura Ascendancy. Go to turn four. We are going to play a Duress for turn. That's going to be one counter. We are going to play a Supreme Phantom. That's now two counters. Um, we're going to play a Swamp for turn. We are going to Experimental Augury. That's going to, to proliferate, so we're going to create... It's going to be at three counters. Uh, we're going to look at the top three. We're going to put one in hand. We are going to put... Uh, where the rest go? I don't know how to put them on the bottom of the library, so we're just going to put Experimental Augury to hand. Um, go to turn six. We are going to play... Uh, Tetheret's Gambit, paying two life. So Obscura Ascendancy is going to be at four. We're going to draw two cards. Um, we're going to play a Planes for turn. We are going to play Experimental Augury. We're going to proliferate. It's going to be at five. So all of our spirits get plus one, plus one, plus three, plus three. So they're all, f fuck, plus four, plus four. So we're going to swing in with the two one, one spirits, which are now five fives, and the one three. Uh, they all have flying, so that's going to be 15 damage to the face. Um, and then next turn, I think we would just run out another Supreme Phantom, or even better, run out um, another Cap or run out Captain. Uh, so that they have Hexproof, and then we just swing in with a board of 6-6s. Six it's not as fast, however, um, definitely being able to tick up Ascendancy as fast as you can is really important. Uh, and yeah, last up, this deck is bad, but I like it, but it's bad. So this deck is focused on Morg Burst. Um, this is a card I used to play a lot as a kid because I thought it was cool. I was like, okay... So I get a creature back, and I can burn an opponent equal to its right, like, you know, like it just seemed really good. So basically, we it, it deals damage equal to their power, um, and we use cards like Buried Alive in order to get big creatures into the graveyard, like Artisan of Kozilek and Ancient Stone Idol, um, and then we play Morgue Burst to get them back. And uh, Mizix's Mastery to copy Morgue Burst. Um, basically, as long as you cast Morgue Burst twice, you win the game. Um, Faithless Looting and Cathartic Reunion to also help them get back in your hand. Um, sorry, to get them out of your hand if they're in your hand. Lightning Bolt for removal. Dark Ritual to get to Buried Alive faster. Wizard's Rockets for draw. Uh, Discerning Peddler as just another way to draw a discard. Um, Shadow Blood Ridge, Mountains, and Swamps. Overall, pretty simplistic deck. It's just, it's almost like a different calibrated blast in a sense. Um, I don't think we keep, mm, yeah, we keep this. Okay. So we're going to go mountain into faithless looting. We're going to draw two. We're going to put two ancient stone idols into the graveyard. We are going to play a swamp. Um, we're going to play a wizard's rockets tapped. We're going to play a mountain. We're going to play a, I think, Wizard's Rockets for zero, draw a card, um, Cathartic Reunion, discarding uh, Peddler and Cathartic, draw three cards, um, go to turn four, we're going to Shadow Blood Ridge, 
um, play Buried Alive, Search for Creatures, we're going to put Stone Idol, um, Kozilek, and Kozilek into the graveyard, um, go to turn 5, um, Discerning Peddler, Discarding Stone Idol, drawing a card, uh, Discerning Peddler, Discarding a Buried Alive, drawing a card, um, go to turn 6, Play a Mountain, go to turn 7, Faithless Looting, draw two cards, discard a Mizix's Mastery, um, go to turn 8, we have a Shadow Blood Ridge, we're going to Morgue Burst, we're going to return uh, Ancient Stone Idol to our hand, dealing 12 damage to the opponent, go to turn 9, we'll Morgue Burst again, um, we could also Mizix's Mastery, whatever, return it to hand, deal another 12 damage to the opponent, and theoretically close off the game. Um, like I said, very inconvenient, very slow. Um, I basically just wanted to play a Mort Burst deck because I remember it, uh, from it, like, when I was a kid. Um, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's it for Kitchen Table Showdown for the day. Uh, what am I working on? I'm working on a Power Balance deck. Um, I have a handful of ideas, you know, basic elves, um basically everything I went over before, but I would like to know, like, what kind of cards y'all would look forward to, what you would build around, all that sort of shit, and, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, peace out, y'all.